Good morning, everybody. For those of you that don't know me, I've been working with the insurance sector for a couple of years on various um, legal topics. And at the moment, I've been engaged by the Malta Insurance Association to assist them with formulation of amendments to strengthen drink driving legislation. But not only drink driving, we're also working on drug driving, which as the previous speaker pointed out, um, Malta Insurance Association considers it to be a major problem. Um, the Malta Insurance Association obviously has a big interest in this topic. It is an undisputed fact, as the previous speakers have pointed out, that both drink and drug driving leads to more accidents and therefore more claims for insurance companies. But we also need to remember that claims or higher claims is not really a problem for the insurance companies only, but at the end of the day, it is a problem for all of us because um, higher claims lead to higher premiums. So at the end of the day, the diligent drivers will be paying the claims of accidents caused as a result of alcohol and drug consumption. As those of you who work in the insurance sector know that the victim has a right of compensation even when the driver is under the influence of alcohol, the insurer has to pay and then the rights of the insurer is sometimes to proceed to recover the amount it had to pay the victim from the actual driver which would be uninsured under the policy. But the victim is protected so the claims have to be paid and at the end of the day claims are borne by the premiums that even the diligent drivers have to pay. So at the moment, we've been working on some legislative proposals, as I told you before. Um, they are not yet finalized, but we have looked at foreign jurisdictions. We've also taken note of some suggestions now that we've heard today. And the starting point for us was the national alcohol policy. So we've looked at that. Um, the Malta Insurance Association supports the national alcohol policy. And just to put you in the context, the national alcohol policy identifies measures addressed to the entire population as well as specific measures targeting young people and drink driving. There are a number of policy actions which are identified to reduce drink driving um, they are actions 18 till 23. Action 18 is important from the legislative point of view. It provides that we need to ensure that the necessary legislative support is always adequate so as to enable law enforcement officers to carry out random bread testing and behavioral roadside tests as well as compulsory road testing follow following a road accident. And as you shall see in my presentation, these are some of the proposals that we shall be putting forward. There are also proposals um, which were made on prescribing stricter limits on the blood alcohol content, but the legislator has already made the alcohol limits stricter by means of Act 14 of 2017 and Action 21 also speaks about ensuring that penalties for drink driving offenses are increased and we'll also be making a proposal for increased penalties. I would not like to repeat um, the excellent pre presentation that we had previously by Madam Justice Sherry Herrera who explained already how Article 15C of Chapter 65 works, the Traffic Regulation Ordinance but I will just um, mention it previously, um, mention it once again, although it has been mentioned previously, given that some of our amendments will be touching this article. Now, this article, as you can see, is based on the reasonable suspicion of a police officer on one of the paragraphs mentioned there, A, B, C, and D. These are rather broad in scope. So if you read them, and even if you read, for example, paragraph D, the discretion of the police officer here to request a specimen of breath for a breath test is rather wide. The instances 
when this may be demanded is rather wide. It, if you look at paragraph three, for example, it covers the situation where a person was driving or is attempting to drive or was in charge of a motor vehicle or other vehicle on a road or other public place when that motor vehicle or other vehicle was involved in an accident. So the simple fact that you were involved in an accident under paragraph D is one of the situations where the police officer can ask the driver to provide a specimen of breath. Um, nonetheless, in practice, we feel that um, not sufficient breath tests are being carried out, even though Article 15, Paragraph C is sufficiently wide. Um, although it's wide, we are not really happy with the enforcement aspect. And we feel that the breath test should become compulsory in the case of a traffic accident which involves death or bodily injury. So um, what we are saying here is that every time there is a traffic accident where somebody is injured or somebody has lost his life, then it should be mandatory for the police officer to carry out a breath test. Um, we note that the minister in his introduction, Minister Falzon, was quite um, eager on this particular proposal. And in fact, if you look at the National Alcohol Policy Action 18, which I mentioned before, states that um, the legislation should enable law enforcement officers to carry out compulsory road testing following a road accident. So our proposal here is that where a motor vehicle is involved in an accident which give rise, uh, gives rise to death or personal injury of any person, the police officer shall in all cases require the person in charge of the motor vehicle to submit to an alcohol and or um, drug test. We have also been looking at foreign legislation and the Malta Insurance um, Association is also very eager on having random testing. So at the moment, um, Everything is based on the reasonable suspicion of the police officer have on, on one of those instances triggered in Article 15, Paragraph C, but the association wants to be able to carry out random testing irrespective of having a reasonable suspicion on the part of the police officer. Now we have looked at foreign legislation on this particular point to see what is happening abroad. And one particularly interesting um, jurisdiction that we have come across is Ireland. The Road Traffic Act of 2016, it was amended and there is a particular provision, Section 11 of the 2016 Act dealing with mandatory intoxicant testing, which amended Section 10 of the 2010 Act. And if you look at the provision over here, a member of the Garda of the Police who is on duty at a checkpoint may stop any vehicle at the checkpoint and without prejudice to any other powers conferred on the police by statute or common law, the police officer may require a person in charge of the vehicle to do one or more of the following. And paragraph A speaks about providing a specimen of breath, while paragraph B speaks about providing a specimen of oral fluid in the manner um, indicated by the member. We don't need to, to read it all, but basically in Ireland it is possible to have mandatory intoxicant testing at checkpoints. Not necessarily based on the police officer seeing that the person might be under the, uh, under the influence of alcohol. Um, in Malta, as regard um, road checks, we have section 355 of the criminal code which grants the police the power to organize road checks where there are reasonable grounds for believing that a check on vehicles in or passing to a locality may lead to one of the situations contemplated in, in paragraphs A to G. So there must be one of these situations in the criminal code for the police to be able to carry out a road check. Now we're not speaking about alcohol testing and a road check, then now we're speaking about a road check and we're not yet um, at this stage, we're in the road check 
we are going to be carrying out um, alcohol testing. So the current situation, the current provisions in the criminal code here on road checks do not contemplate any, um, any alcohol or drug testing. Now the road check can be carried out even for the ascertainment of violations of any law regarding motor vehicles or traffic regulation. So technically, for example, I mean, if the police um, know that there's gonna be a, a party which is renowned for drug taking or, uh, or other um, violations of the sort, they could, it is possible to carry out a road check, but we feel that there is no particular provision um, which, Allah, which gives the police the power to carry out compulsory alcohol or drug tests on whoever is caught in the roadblock. So one proposal that the, the Malta Insurance Association will be putting forward would be to amend Article 355, Paragraph A, um, and to add a new um, third provision which would expressly give the powers to the police to say that where a vehicle has been stopped in pursuance of the provisions of the subtitle, the police may require the persons in charge of motor vehicles to submit to an alcohol or drug test. So the, what we would like here is that once there is a roadblock, the police can test all the persons which are caught up in the roadblock. As I mentioned in my introduction, we feel that the legislative um, regime over here in Malta is very weak in so far as drugs are concerned. We have the mention of drugs in section 15, paragraph A, which tells us, um, of, which tells us that no person shall drive or attempt to drive or be in charge of a motor vehicle or other vehicle on a road or other public place if he is unfit to drive through drink or drugs. So drugs are mentioned there in section 15A, but then when it comes to section 15B, when we have prescribed limits, those prescribed limits are applicable only to the alcohol um, to the alcohol part. So when we, ha when we come to drugs, we have a very weak legislative regime, even though um, we believe that drugs have become a very serious problem similar to alcohol in traffic accidents. So the association will be proposing amendments also to section 15B of chapter 65 of the laws of Malta so that um, there will be prescribed limits also for substances. Um, we have seen that this exists in other jurisdictions. We are also trying to see what um, technical means are required because obviously the police need to have the technical means to be able to carry out these type of tests. But as the previous speaker pointed out, pointed out as well, in other jurisdictions there are fixed substance limits and there is also the technical means to um, establish whether a person is under the influence of particular drugs. So the idea here is to have the same um, framework, not only for alcohol, but also for drugs. And the idea would be therefore that even section 15, paragraph B, in the same situations that we have today, will be able to require not only an alcohol test, but also a drug test. And the driver will be requested to provide either a breath specimen or other um, specimens. In fact, we feel also that the legislation can also be made a bit stronger over here. Um, and we've looked at, at how other legislations deal with this. They provide for audit flu flu fluid specimens. Even our law actually provides for blood or urine specimens, but we believe that the drafting can be improved. There has also been changes in technology. Way back, it used to be a preliminary test, which then had to be confirmed by a later test in the lab, but the technology today is able to give a, a final test immediately. So the type of technology that exists today, we are informed that can give you a, a conclusive test um, immediately on the spot, on the first test, um, carried out and therefore we feel that the legislation should also re reflect these changes in technology. Um, we are also proposing a further increase in fines. Um, we feel that the 
current limits are still not dissuasive within that 1,800 euros and 3,000 euros in the case of a second and subsequent conviction is still on the low side and the association will be proposing an increase in fines possibly to 3,000 euros for a first conviction and 5,000 euros um, in the case of a second or subsequent conviction. We've also taken note of the interesting suggestion made today by Madam Justice Sherry Herrera, um, which pointed out that if you don't, um, if you don't um, comply, if you don't agree to the blood test and yet you are found guilty, there might be a problem for the courts to suspend your license. So possibly we can also look into this and see whether we can also introduce this point in the legislation so that there could be a compulsory suspension of license even if you refuse to take the breath test. Thank you very much.